This is my first time making a diorama, and I think it turned out pretty well. While making my latest miniature, I eventually realized that I will have to make bases for all of these guys to stand on, but I'm not really sure exactly what kind of style those are going to be yet. So I just said, hell with it, I'll make a whole diorama instead, for now. This way I can also show off a bit of my vision for the aesthetic of Spire Seas and Diluvian Chronicles as a whole. Just one problem, I'd never done anything like it. Not that that's stopped me before. Still, not wanting to go into this completely blind, I decided to start off with a nice, tiny, little, mini test diorama. So cute. First, I ripped some wire out of an old keyboard cable and used it to twist up a little tree. Then I used some hot glue to bulk out the wood. This is one of the techniques that I wanted to test out before trying it on a larger piece. And I think it turned out okay. I then took the tree and based it on some foam board. I think it makes for some really great looking old worn concrete. I even added some thicker wire to serve as rebar and a scrap of plastic card as a metal plate. To seal it in, I ended up going over everything with this natural milk paint, black color. I don't really know what this stuff is, but it's really cheap at Daiso and creamy, I guess. I left the hot glue tree uncovered because I wanted to test out if the primer would stick to it or if I had to base coat the whole tree as well. Turns out it worked fine. And, underneath the primer, that milky black paint served to really bring out some nice details on the piece. I then turned to a few different grey paints from my Army Painter set, and some nice oak brown for the tree, as well as some silver and rust for the metal bits. Once thoroughly dry, I soaked everything in a nice dark brown wash. Then I brought out the flocking. This is the second technique that I really wanted to test out before trying it on something bigger. With a little watered down PVA glue, my mossy grass and patchy leaves went on without a hitch. Then I covered the sides in matte black. I probably could have called it there, it was looking pretty good, but there was one last thing I needed to test out. I used a bit of UV curing resin, also from Daiso, to add the water. I dammed the edges with some simple masking tape and went at it. Once I thought I had enough, I stuck it in my UV curing station and voila! A nice little mini resin pour. I guess this was technically my first diorama and it's cute, but it was time to go bigger. For my main diorama, I decided to base it on one of these 10x10 MDF squares. You can get a 6-pack at Daiso for 100 yen, and they will give me a consistent clean edge to work with. I then cut and laid out the form. The intention is to create a mostly sunken ruin with just a fragment of the roof remaining. My little scav veteran should end up right in the middle looking out over the rest of the spire sea. Once the basic form was established, I set to work making an even bigger tree with that same keyboard wire. Then I added some greebles. Or greeblies. Greebles. Greeblay. Hmm. Let me know which one's better down in the comments. Most of these are made from bits of cheap Gundam kits, plus wire, plastic card, and the inner workings of an old pen. I also went over the whole tree with hot glue to add some much needed strength to the limbs. Periodically, I went back and added a little more weathering and damage to the foam, as well as some more wires, before eventually gluing everything in place. One weathering technique that I like a lot for this foam work is to just dab some CA glue on top of the foam itself. Foam board and CA glue don't play nicely together, but that makes for this nice little pockmarked gash in the surface. 
Can't imagine it's very good to breathe, though. So, you know, ventilation. I guess. Lastly, I found the back inside corner was looking a little empty. So I threw in some more rubble and another little piece of random Gundam techno junk. With that, it was time for painting. I basically went through the same process as with the test piece. Some milk black to undercoat and seal everything, gray primer over that, then oak brown for the tree and stony gray for the building itself. I also attempted a sort of blue, light blue gradient for the water, but I think I could have done a lot better on that. When it came time to do the grible, I initially started with a simple black wash, intending to make these all a kind of washed out gray, brown, metal-y look. Then I changed tack and decided to go for a little splash of color instead. I wanted to add a little contrast to the otherwise very dull scene, and hint at a little bit of that cyberpunk far future that existed before the flood in this setting. So I went with a mix of red and yellow, and just a hint of that warlock purple that I mentioned in my last video. Next, the wires themselves all got a coat of black and some copper for the exposed parts. I also went over everything with a healthy dose of rust, chipping, and extra heavy dose of brown wash. Again, once everything was thoroughly cured. And that was the painting finished. The next step was adding the greenery. I mixed up some more watered down PVA and bunched up some brown wood chip looking grass where I thought dirt might accumulate on the ruin. I then added some of this nice mossy green all over the piece, paying special attention to any cracks or grooves. I tried to stay above the waterline as much as possible, but that didn't always pan out. I also added all the little tufts to the tree before finally placing it in position on the piece. Then, after all that hard work was finished, came the final step, the step I had been dreading the most. My first ever resin pour. For the test piece, I had just used some UV resin but I knew that would be both time consuming and expensive for a piece this big, so I went with a two-part epoxy resin instead. I was careful to take out the instructions and, well, I tried. I prepared a little wall of plastic card all the way around the base and went over the edges with a line of hot glue. I really wasn't sure how viscous this stuff would be, so I also added a layer of foam core underneath. And then I just kind of went for it. I mixed it up well and began to pour, trying to keep bubbles to a minimum and get into all the nooks and crannies. Then I breathed in a deep sigh of relief, along with probably a ton of resin fumes, covered it, and let it cure. The next day, I finally cracked it open and looked at the final results. The resin somehow managed to slide between the plastic card and the MDF, coating the entire edge in this nice thin coat. I think it looks really cool, and I'm very glad that I decided to paint it black before pouring the resin, unlike I originally intended. It also got all the way under and made a nice tight bond with the foam core. But other than that, it turned out surprisingly good. With that, my first ever diorama was finally finished. Let's take a closer look. I am overall very happy with this first piece, but I am noticing some things that I'd like to change. The tree for one is probably a little too big, and the colors on the greeble pieces are cool, but 
maybe not quite the color scheme I should go for in the future. And of course, the resin, though beautiful, crystal clear, is a little too clear. I really should have used a little bit of color to darken it or at least do a better job giving an undercoat to the base. If you have any ideas on what I can use to dye this resin a nice blue watery color without making it too opaque, then please let me know down in the comments below. However, the ruin itself and the wires and moss turned out perfect, so I'm definitely going to do more of that in the future. For now though, I have done what I set out to do, and I now have a nice little base to take pictures of my finished minis on. Speaking of which, it's probably time for me to get started working on more of those. This resin pour also gave me some pretty interesting ideas for another diorama that I'd like to explore, but that's going to require a bit more work, so stick around here on the channel if you want to see how that goes. Also, a couple weeks ago I managed to check out the Shizuoka Hobby Show, one of the biggest hobby shows in Japan, and I think one of the biggest plastic model hobby shows in the world, according to their website. There I was able to see a lot of really cool pieces, especially some really cool dioramas and scratch builds in person, and soak in a lot of inspiration and even some helpful tips that I'm going to try out next. And I managed to meet some of my fellow wargamers living out here in Japan. There aren't very many of us. Mm. One of him, James over at JVC Paints, and I had a nice long chat about how wargaming works in Japan and everything hobby related. Check out his video, link in the description below, if you want to see some cool shots from the show. And eventually, I should have my own little mini video about how it went. I'm really curious why 3D printing isn't popular and why miniatures aren't that popular here in Japan. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for sticking with me till the end. I hope you enjoyed the build and see you next time.